This one is definitely my favorite out of all three here. Hello everyone. Today I will be showing you how to make these maple leaf blocks in three different sizes. So we're going to start off with the 12 inch measurements. You will need two squares of your background at five inches and you will also need two squares of your background at four and a half. And then from your leaf print, you will need three at four and a half and two at five inches. And then you will also need a strip of fabric for your stem. And the measurements for a nine inch block, you need two of your leaf fabric at four inches and then two of your background also at four inches. These will be making half square triangles. I forgot to mention that before. And then you will also be needing three pieces of your leaf fabric at three and a half inches. And this is where I did things a little bit differently than on my other one. I cut one piece at three and a half, and then the piece that I need for my stem, I cut it at four inches. This will give me extra trimming room. And I will show you what I mean by that later on. With this one, I will have lots of trimming room, but with my previous one that I cut it the exact size, that one I did not have. I cut my stem pieces at one inches wide and then I just need to make sure that they are long enough to go from one diagonal corner to the other one on my square. This is just going to make sure that I have enough room here. So now moving on to the six inch block, you're going to need two pieces of your leaf fabric at three inches and then two pieces of your background fabric also at three inches for your half square triangles. And then you will need three pieces of your print fabric at two and a half inches each. And then this one I did the same thing. I cut one at two and a half and then the piece that I will be using for my stem, I cut at three inches. And for this one, I made my stem a little bit more narrow. So this piece I only cut at three quarter inches wide. I will also have all of these measurements in the description box down below. And since these blocks are all assembled the exact same way, I will only show you the process on one of my blocks. All right, to start putting this together, I always start with my half square triangles. So I'm gonna be taking my four inch pieces from my nine inch block and I'm gonna be drawing a diagonal line on the back of both of these. This is just gonna be a sewing guide for me so that I know exactly where I need to sew to get an accurate quarter inch seam. Normally, I would have done the four at a time half square triangle method because I need four half square triangles for this block. And since I did not have any pieces big enough to use that method, I just did it this way and this works just fine too. I am trying to clean up my scraps and I will be having lots of scrappy videos coming up. So be sure to stick around for that. So now we need to take our four inch pieces from our leaf print and our background pieces and we're going to lay them right sides together making sure that we have all of our edges lining up nicely and sometimes you just got to finagle it a little bit and get it to sit in place. And then I'm just going to pop a few pins in here to keep it from moving around while I'm sewing it. Sometimes I don't even bother with pins but I've had my fabric shift in the past so if you want to make sure that everything's going to stay nice and lined up it is best to use pins. The next step is to take these to the sewing machine and sew with a quarter inch seam on both sides of these lines using the line as your sewing guide. And I prefer to chain stitch because I feel like it goes faster and I do save on thread a little bit. These blocks are just being made with scraps that I have on hand and I did challenge myself to make some more scrappy blocks so this will be going into that quilt. Then also I found some other blocks that I made for other YouTube tutorials. Those will also be going in this quilt. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you want to see my progress on that. I will be having an update video soon. I have made some more crumb blocks and some more wonky log cabins and some other scrappy blocks. Once we have sewn a quarter inch on each side of the lines, it's time to cut our units apart. I'm just going to be using my slotted trimming ruler here. You could use whichever ruler you prefer or even just use scissors to cut them apart. It doesn't need to be 100% accurate. So to trim them to size, I'll be using my slotted trimmer. And there's a little dotted line here on the three and a half inch line. That I'm going to line up with my stitch line. That's going to make sure that I get an accurate three and a half inch half square triangle unit. I prefer using this trimmer if I want to do my half square triangles. It's a lot easier than doing it the other way and having to line it up with a diagonal line and all that. I found this one on Amazon for a lot less than other places and that's why I bought it. I honestly thought it was going to be a ripoff, but it turned out to be really good quality. I will leave a link to that in the description box below along with a lot of the other tools that I use if you are interested. Once I'm done trimming them, it will be time to go and give them a good press, but I will do that once I am done making my stem unit. So I'm just going to push them to the side and leave them there. So we're going to take our remaining four inch square up from our background fabric and we're going to cut it in half on the diagonal. Again, use whichever ruler you prefer. This is just the one that I had lying on my table. So then that's the one I grabbed. And you will notice that once I put the stem piece in there that our pieces are not the same length. They don't line up perfectly, but that's okay. We are just going to center them and then we will be able to trim it to the correct size later. So the way I center them is I just take my stem piece, I fold it in half, and I'm going to give it a nice little crease here just so that I have a little marking point. You could use a marking pen, 
but I'm a little bit leery about that sometimes. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a little crease right there, and that is going to be my center point. So then I will be taking my triangle pieces and doing the exact same thing, folding them in half and giving them a little crease. And that way I have something that I can use to line up. And I'm sorry if you can hear my daughter in the background. She just wants a snack, which I have given her, and I think she should be good now for a bit. So once I've folded these in half, we're just going to take those creases and we're going to line them up, making sure that the raw edges of our fabric are all nice and even. I'm just going to use some wonder clips to hold this in place because I don't want this to shift around while I'm sewing it because I do have all my creases marked out and I don't want to all of a sudden accidentally misalign anything and then when we go to trim later on it wouldn't work. So we're going to sew that with a quarter inch seam and then we're going to sew the other side. And this is what it looks like before I've done any pressing. Like you could press it before you sew the other side on but I didn't want to lose my crease so I just sewed them both on. Now that this is all done I will go and give these all a good press and I'll come back. Now that I've pressed it all nice and flat, we're going to trim it to three and a half inches because that is what all of our other units are. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line it up and make sure that I have trimming room all around. And as you can see on this one, I do have quite a bit of trimming room. But if you're anything like me, you would much rather have extra trimming space. And here I'm just making sure that everything's lining up nicely. And that diagonal line that is on my ruler, I'm trying to make sure that it's in the center of my stem so that I will have the stem centered as much as I can. And then we're just going to trim it all the way around. And then before I move on to the uh, block assembly for this one, I'm going to show you on the 12 inch block because on that one I cut my stem piece the exact size that I needed it to be. And I did that so that I could show you just how little wiggle room you have. If you cut the stem square to four and a half inches or three and a half inches or two and a half inches, like what your finished size is supposed to be, it's going to give you very little wiggle room. So I just wanted to show you how much easier it is if you give yourself extra trimming room. All right, so I'm going to show you on the 12 inch block that I'm making. Uh, this piece is four and a half inches square. That is what I need this to be when it's done and sewn together with the stem piece in there. So same thing, I just cut it on the diagonal and then we take our stem piece and we're going to center it in there. This stem piece is also one inch wide, just if you were curious about that. And I folded everything in half and sewed it together and here it is all done. I don't have a four and a half inch ruler, so I'm just going to use my six and a half inch and make sure that I'm lining everything up properly. And this one I did not have to cut a whole lot off. I was just being extra careful because I knew I did not have any room to make any errors here. If my ruler slipped or anything, my block was going to end up being too small. And I'm pretty sure that the only thing I trimmed off of this was those tiny little brown corners. So I personally prefer to give myself extra wiggle room. Some people think it's a waste of fabric, but I'll rather waste a little bit of fabric like that than if I were to cut this too small now and then have to remake the whole thing because this is no longer useful to me. But that's all that I cut off of there, those little brown tips. So it's entirely up to you how you want to do it, but I figured I would show you both ways. Okay, now I will show you how to assemble these blocks. So I always start with my stem piece and I put that on the bottom left hand corner. And then I take the body of my leaf, which is my three pieces that are all the same size and the same color. And then I'm going to start placing my half square triangles. And this is where you need to be careful that you're placing them the correct way. And the way that I kind of remember is that I want my triangle points facing towards the tip of the leaf, if that even makes any sense, but I have my own way of doing things. So I'm going to place these bottom ones the wrong way just to give you an idea of what it would look like. And, and you can see that it doesn't look right. So it kind of gives you an idea that you placed them wrong. So we're just going to put them on the right way. So again, my points are going to be facing up towards the tip of my leaf. And then once those are on, all we need to do is take our last background piece and add that to the top corner there. And we are ready to start sewing this together. And again, I will be chain stitching as much as I can. So starting at my top, I'm going to be taking my middle piece and just putting it right sides together with the piece on the left and continuing down, doing each row like this. And then we will need to sew a quarter inch on all three of these pieces. I will be chain stitching and then just grabbing the next one and moving on. I'll show you how I do that. So I have everything laid out the way I want to sew it together. So I'm just going to start on the top row and grab those two pieces and line everything up. You could pin or clip these pieces together so that they don't shift while you're sewing, but I didn't want to do that. I very often want to small pieces and I don't bother with that. So once I've sewn the top two together, I will just grab the middle two and sew them together and then continue on down the line like this. And once I've sewn this last one, all I'm just going to do is reach around and grab that first one and cut it off. And then I'm going to show you how I keep in mind on which way it goes. I know I sewed on the right hand side, so now I just need to open it up 
and I know that this is the correct orientation and then I can just grab my top piece for the right hand side and then just lay those right sides together and sew that on. I hope that makes sense. Like I said, sometimes people look at me like I'm a little weird and don't know what I'm doing. But, well, sometimes I don't, but usually I do. I have my own methods. And I will just continue that same process until I have all of my rows sewn together. And then I will show you how I press my seams to make sure that all my seams will nest when I want to sew my rows together. All right, I am over at my ironing station, so I am going to show you how I press these. So my top and my bottom rows, I'm pressing my seams to the middle. And my middle row, I will be pressing the seams to the outside. So it doesn't really matter where you start, as long as you just remember how your pieces are, were all lying and how it will all go together in the end. That's why I always lay everything out and double check before I sew anything. So like I said, the top and bottom, I will be pressing the seams to the center. And then my middle row, I will be pressing them to the outside of my block. And this will ensure that I will get proper nesting and my blocks should lay flatter. That's one of the main reasons why I try to nest all my seams. That will help the blocks lay flatter and in the end just give you a better overall look. So as you can see, my little seams, they go towards the center. And then when I do my middle row, I will just make sure that those seams are facing to the outside. Now that we have our rows all completed, we are ready to sew these together. And I'm going to be making sure that I'm going to be doing the pin method. So that means I'm going to take my top row and lay it right sides together with the middle row. And then I'm going to be making sure that my seams are nesting, that they are butting up against each other. And then I will take a pin and I will put it in that seam there. This I will not move until I have the needle right up against there. Just making sure that you don't sew over your needle. This just makes sure that nothing moves or shifts while you're sewing. So just go and sew that with a quarter inch seam. And once you're done that, give it a good press. And then we are ready to take this top unit and lay it right sides together with our last row. And same thing, we're going to do the pin method here as well, making sure everything is lined up. And then we will sew that with a quarter inch seam and give it a good press. And I'll show you what all these blocks look like. I absolutely love the way they turned out. I think this little red one is my favorite. I don't know why. I just love that color. And I wish I had more of that red fabric. I don't know. I just could make such a cute quilt with that, I think. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for stopping by. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Until next time.